Hi, I'm Wayward, and this is Grey Goo. I have another 1v1 today on World Tree, that community-created map, uh, which was created by community member Awesome Socks. And today I have um, a really interesting thing to show off. Uh, Xset, who is one of our players, he's the red human, and on this side we have Balkarn as our shroud player. Um, what we're looking at today is a match on a completely new version of the game. Xset has created what we're calling the Quick Script um, <coughs> mod, and what that does is um, it refunds the money from the first uh, resource production structure you create. Now, what that does is allows the game to get started off a lot quicker. So, what we see right now is uh, Xset doing his initial scout. We have up the structures tab we actually have two no three extractors up for Bulkarn, and over here on the human side we already have three extractors and a ton of factories now if you are not familiar with gray goo it usually takes about five to six minutes to really get started up especially on a long cross spawn like this where it can um you can just pump out a bunch of extractors if you're human um, refineries if you're human, or extractors if you're shroud, etc. So this patch actually allows players to get started up a lot more quickly. It really reduces the um, the intro time for the game, the, the build-up, uh, and a lot of players really enjoy it. So this is the first time I've taken a look at it, the first time I've seen anything, and it's really neat to me to be able to see four factories going down two minutes into the game instead of, you know, six or seven. Uh, meanwhile, we have two advents going down for our Shroud player, and if we look, we are at four extractors and three refineries. So this is a really quick, much, much faster to get to this point in the game. Got uh, our human player's trident chasing off that mimic. Uh, of course, the mimic is still going to get basically full vision. It looks like... X set has transitioned into pure revolvers. There's actually some uh, conversation going on right now in the Grey Goo community as to whether the revolver or the trident is better. Common wisdom was that the trident, which is this guy, was the better unit uh, in general, where revolvers were basically only good for anti-armor and not good to mass. Uh, it seems like more and more it's looking like the revolver is probably just, in general, kind of a, a fine unit to use. Um, and actually will, will win out in even numbers in large balls against tridents. So I'm not entirely sure if that's what's going on, if this is a test of that um, or not, but that's what we're seeing, and it looks like he's starting to try to hunt down these extractors. Um, Shroud can get really nasty, especially in the late game, when there are a lot of extractors out. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, our Shroud player has a ton of advents now, looking like he's on seven advents um, and counting. We have our first amplifier going down. Now, if you're not familiar with Grey Goo, allow me to <laughs> illuminate you. So how um, the Shroud work is they build these advents, which can produce up to three units at a time. Um, and when you plop an amplifier down in the middle of the advents, you see those little pips there. I'll select this one. See how it's got that yellow pip? Um, what that means is it's increasing the tech level of the advent. So each amplifier increases the tech level of the advent, or um, advents can be upgraded into one of two other structures. Uh, it'll upgrade the tech levels of those also. So the number of amplifiers is basically the tech level of all the buildings around it. The other interesting shroud mechanic is for each extractor, they have a build radius. Uh, I think I can demonstrate that if I switch to Balkarn. No? Uh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, there's a, a certain radius around the entity, the, their core structure, that they can build, uh, and each extractor they build uh, it increases that. So we have uh, an extractor under attack, might go down under the combined fire of those scimitars. So relatively quick transition to air for Xset, and anti-air is relatively uncommon, uh, so we'll have to see how Balkarn responds. Okay, let's take a look at our human player's base. We have a large factory going down, artillery and stealth, so he's going to be transitioning into howitzers as well. Um, no huge surprise. Actually, it looks like all of those area... No, there's an aircraft up there, too. Looks like we're up to five. Let's take a look at our units. Pretty even unit numbers. This is not going to go well for the human player. 
Uh, oh, that's a shame. Bulkarn could have pushed up there and knocked that uh, refinery out. Looks like both players are trying to hunt the economy of their opponent. Another extractor goes down. That is really bad for Bulkarn. He's now running on three. No, he has still managed to be at five extractors, so he was at seven, I guess. Um, that one there. Looks like Balkarn is trying to slow down his opponent's expansion into his territory with these aversion fields. Again, if you're not familiar with how the game works, aversion fields push away enemy units while allowing allied units to pass through. Meanwhile, Xset has a foothold right next to his um, opponent's territory. It's it's a shame that Balkarn doesn't try to, to take this back. This is some really valuable resources that he could use. Meanwhile, okay, so we have a siren coming out. Let's take a look at our structures. Advent. Zenith. This is uh, for air units. And there it is, a crucible, which is for uh, it's, it's high-level ground units. And you see a second amplifier there, so we're running on two pips. Two pips. Another little engagement going on here. I think our Shroud player might have just enough for this. Yeah, it uh, looks like he's gonna take that. And these, see these sirens out for anti-air. I think what sirens do is they don't actually damage the unit. They just uh, force it to land, basically, to allow ground units to attack it. Yeah, see, there it is, pulling them down to the ground and allowing... Oop, there we go again, allowing those units to be cleaned up. All three at once, nice. <laughs> the exit was not too thrilled with that. Going back to our structures, we can take a look at economy real quick. Six refineries to five extractors. So our human player is starting to pull ahead a little bit. Looks like as of right now, though, um, I think, yeah, Shroud. Our Shroud player is definitely ahead in resources at the, at the moment. Um, so we can actually use more refineries on this end. Um, in fact, if we look up here, no, uh, Xset's actually fine with his resources for now. Looks like we are going to have... This is probably going to be Lancers. Um, it's really, really common to see human players go with Lancers and then Teleporter and then to teleport into their enemy space and just wreck it with, uh, with Lancers. Really strong commitment to tier one from Exit. This seems like a mistake to me. So you got some splitting going on there because these uh, Klaxons um, will dash into the enemy formation like you see there and deal area damage. We have some howitzers going down, but wisely Exit is pulling them back. This is far too large of a force. Uh, in fact, Balkarn is feeling pretty safe and is going to try to put some pressure on his opponent after having been. Um, on the back foot so far. He's now built up enough that he can feel comfortable pushing out. Real quick, let's switch to Bulkarn. He's actually got decent map vision. Oh, look, he's managed to, to retake this. That is very good. Yeah, Xset is relying uh, heavily on air units and is going to have to transition of it out of it now because those sirens are... Um oh, no. Uh, get that scimitar out. Get it out. You can do it. Oh. Now the howitzer is able to chase off the enemy forces. Oh, and I almost missed this. Right into his opponent's base. Balkarn has a nasty little force here of clashers. Not much left back in base for Xset to use. The howitzers are proving a bit of a deterrent, but honestly, if um, Balkarn just committed... No, I think this this is going to be cleaned up, but not not much done, but we do get a scout. And up here, we have some aversion fields going down. Still, those scimitars are making themselves a nuisance. Most of that army's been cleaned up now, so Xset is probably feeling okay. But his harvesting was interrupted, which is going to be a bit of a problem if... Balkarn is not very much further ahead, um, but that may end add up in the in the later game. We have daggers out. Oh, and we have some tech here. Both players actually have a lot of tech. Um, 
We have proximity mines. So howitzer mines um, upgraded. Mine drop, the scimitar drops mines, that's a popular one. Um, daggers, of course, are permanently invisible now, which is good for scouting. And our harvesters are also invisible, which that must that's still researching, I guess. On our Shroud Player's side, we have the very popular channeled buildup, which makes the Howler AoE uh, unit do a much wider area. And we have Mox out, which are a suicide unit, I believe. <coughs> they do nasty area of effect damage when they crash into armies. So we actually have a lot of AoE going on here with these upgraded Howlers. There's a ton of upgraded Howlers, in fact, and there's almost nothing here for Xset. This is going to be really quick, I think with units just, just dying under this massive AoE assault. Nice use of those scimitars. Um, but definitely still favoring... Oh that, oh, that entire army just goes right down. And those howitzers are going to be cleaned up by that Klaxon, too. Maybe not, thanks to those Valiants. But, uh, ouch. And I think thanks to those scimitars and the, the howitzers, it, it uh, actually turns it around. Volkarn not doing a good enough job keeping his AoE numbers up. Um, not AoE, anti-air. Anti-air numbers up. And we have a Gladius coming out. <sighs> but just a ton of units here. Oh, and I almost missed this. This little assault force is going to get cleaned up by Volkarn's forces. And I didn't know Mox targeted air either, so now we both know. And... Soothing Pulse, which um, means that these Aversion Fields are going to now heal the Shroud player, the Shroud, shroud units. <laughs> Still one dagger sitting there. I actually don't know what for um, for Shroud detects stealth. I actually don't know what unit that, what that is. Let's see what this mock does, if this targets anything. Here we have another engagement. While, really quick, down here we have some economic damage going on. Xset does not have enough units to hold this in any meaningful way. Uh, in fact, he, with, without pulling back, this, this is going to get really bad for him. Switching back to units. Yeah, in fact, you see uh, Xset has a much, much, much smaller army than his opponent. Even with these scimitars, this is looking pretty nasty for him. Pretty, pretty grim. In fact, this force has continued to pull up north and continuing to harass X sets economy. Wow. X sets economy. Harass X sets economy. Uh, in an epic BM move, we have Balkarn producing a version field right in his opponent's doorstep. Uh, this is actually really good for him, too, because once these are finished, they're going to heal his units, but I don't think. Looks like X set is just going to pull this back. Uh, so we kind of have a massive ongoing fight here between our human player and... I think we have another upgrade. I think these mocks are doing something now. Was it a chime? Oh, oh, the chime is a scout with stealth infection. And it makes enemy air units passively take damage. Well, allied air units are healed, so that's actually really good for what Xset is doing. There's howlers, there's additional howlers coming in doing nasty, nasty AoE damage. I don't know if it's visual glitching or why that is so large. Yeah, you can see the chimes dealing passive air air damage. And Balkarn has um, replaced his AoE unit. Let me see the siren right there. Xset is in some real trouble right now. He's managing to push this back and get his economy set up again. But this army is right in his face. I mean, it's less than a screen's length away from his production. Which, of course, he is getting some more production up. But, uh, yeah, this is all these aversion fields, all these units continuing to come out. The Howlers, in particular, are, are just doing nasty, nasty, massive damage. Um... Decent number of howitzers going on here. Um, nothing stopping these these chimes from getting the perfect scout. Let's see, Balkarn knows everything that's going on. 
where Extet actually does have some decent scouting with his with his dagger. But looking at the unit counts, it's definitely, definitely still favoring our Shroud player, especially with all this AoE able to continually chip away at the health of the human units. Let's zoom in a little bit. Claxton's taking out these howitzers. Ugh. Have a little bit of uh, harass here going on from our human player, but this is really where all the action is. Uh, in fact, checking the resources tab, still not too bad, but it's been in Bulkhorn's favor like the whole game. And he just continues to remax. I'm surprised that he doesn't stop this. But maybe he's just so sure he's going to win. I mean, he's right up in Exet's face with these aversion fields. Yeah, I'm not sure what Exet can even do at this point. He just can't put a big enough dent into these Howler numbers. Uh, he's he's trying to get a concave, and, and these Howlers are certainly helping. Ugh. It's painful. Yeah, let me see the harass going on here with the aversion fields. Actually, let's see. Do the aversion fields... Uh, the harvesters ignore the aversion fields, which I guess is good for balance. I see a lot of I see a lot of shrouds doing this this aversion field BM. Uh, some more economic harassment and um, X sets level harassment team has been cleaned up. We've got some new extractors coming out. There's no real danger to Volcarn's economy at this point. Uh, the danger is all on X sets side. Um, unit numbers have evened up a little bit. Still, as they have always been, just barely though at this point in in Bulkhorn's favor. I have a th personal theory about Grey Goo, um, <laughs> related to the amount of map vision a player has. Uh, typically, oh, we have a switch to sides, which are traditionally held to be the better air unit for humans. Uh, scimitars are seen as worse. And we have longbows coming out, which is, I think, a little bit belated. <laughs> Maybe he's bugging out, or if the aversion field's just pushing him around. It's kind of funny. Uh, for the first time so far, I think, Exet has now more units than his opponent. By only a little bit, though. Really bad engagement could, could take either player out at this point. Speaking of engagements, got the mocks coming in. Wasting a ton of mocks on that one Gladius. I'd really like to see the, the longbow upgrade, actually. So they can attack air and ground units. This is going to go, I think, in Xset's favor. There's just not enough shroud units here. Shroud units are nasty, but... Oh, I didn't see these klaxons, but they're targeting the wrong thing. Looks like Xset switched to his increased Gladius numbers is, is putting out more HP than these Klaxons can, can handle, so that's good. The first one feels hilarious. Watch, watching the push units is just a lot of fun. The unit numbers have now swung dramatically in Xset's favor. Taking a look. 8 Valiants, 20 Howitzers, 20 Howitzers? Jeez. Some of those are in production, but still. And this howitzer harass over here, cleaning up these units, there's nothing near enough to take out this army down here. The human push continues, forcing Bulkhorn to pull back. Reversion field's being cleaned up. I'm not convinced this is enough on Balkarn's side. It might be just enough with these. Oh, those are chimes, though. Well, no, that army's been cleaned up. I 
The Balkan holds it off. Nothing stopping this force, though. Unit numbers now tipping back in our Shroud player's favor. Let's see. We may want to transition away from Howitzers for now. That's a big army. Let's see. Yep, doing the smart thing, I think. No? He should really pull this up and help defend. If he loses this definitively, he's going to lose the game. Oh, we have Lancers out. I, uh, good switch, I think. Lancers have a ton of hit points, and they can take out these Klaxons. You see, we <laughs> melt them pretty quick. Uh, they do go down, but uh, yeah, I think the Lancers managed to hold that attack off just enough. And we have some pretty massive scythe numbers out, too. So, well held off by Xset, and finally <laughs> that um, harass army cleaned up by this big Klaxon force. Mostly Klaxons. This match has just been back and forth the whole time, from the beginning. A ton more units coming out for Xset, also for Balkarn. And again, we have the counter econ harass. I think that might be enough units to clean that up. Bit of a standoff here. Which will, I think, play a bit in Xset's favor. Yeah, I think that's going to get cleaned up. Just barely, but I think so. Yep, down there shroud go, and we have another big standoff here. Army now massively again in Xset's favor. And these yeah, these howlers can't do anything to that. Too much HP there. I think these chimes are a bad investment at this point. It'd almost be better to have a switch back into uh, sirens. Tracker is going to get away, but can't do anything while it's walking. Over time, Xed has actually turned around the uh, economy into his advantage, finally. I think this might be it for Balkarn. We have a big, pretty big force down here, pretty big force here, and no more production coming out. Balkarn gives the GG, and that is the game. So really back and forth game, lots of action going on in the middle of the map, some really big reversals on both sides, actually several times. Um, there were times where I was absolutely sure Balkarn was going to win, times where I was absolutely sure Exit was going to win, and it seemed to it because it was it really only resolved kind of at the end there. Um, so really interesting match. Um, excited to see more coming out from the quick script mod. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been Grey Goo, and I have been Wayward Strategy.